Tonight's episode of Horrified is brought to you by Fright Rags, the greatest and most original officially licensed horror apparel and accessories in the world. Go to FrightRags.com and use promo code Aeriscope10 at checkout and save 10% off your entire order. And now, Aeriscope Pictures presents the original series, Horrified. The monsters under our beds. The creatures lurking in our closets. When we're young, sometimes we find ourselves so terrified by our own bedrooms that we have no choice but to call in the big guns. Yes, I'm talking about mom and dad. They answer our cries for help. They comfort us. They chase away our nightmares. They let us know we're safe. But when filmmaker Darren Lynn Balsman was a child, what his father insisted was only his overactive imagination turned out to be something different. Yes, the tale you're about to hear is true. And it will surely leave you sleeping with the lights on and feeling horrified. When I was growing up, I lived in a very normal neighborhood in a very normal house in Kansas City. And I had very normal parents. People always ask me, how did I get so uh, fucked up, I guess, in the movies that I make? And I don't think there was necessarily one defining moment. And then I actually started thinking about it, and maybe actually there was. So we lived in a multi-level house. There was four stories. There was the basement, and then you walked up the stairs to the basement. And this is important to understand my story. And there was like a downstairs family room, and another floor up was the main family room. And then next floor up is where all the bedrooms were. So I actually lived in the attic, which was one floor even above that. And it was a huge, big open area. And, and basically my family had converted the attic into this big room. The part that I lived in was finished. It had carpeted floors. It had an awesome waterbed. And that's right, I had a waterbed. Where the closet began, they, it was all unfinished. And so there was a hatch door in my closet and it was, you had to kneel down and you had to open it up and it led to an uninsulated insulated part of the attic that you couldn't step on. It's one of those kind of places that there were boards you had to step on when walking. If you stepped on the insulation, you'd fall through the ceiling. This was way before the times where everyone had air conditionings in every room or central air and we had an attic fan. And basically the way an attic fan worked was it would suck the hot air up, bring it through the attic, and then take it out through the attic outside. And so there was this weird cylindrical fan that was in the attic and it would circle all the hot air out. So every night I would hear this really crazy sound. And the only way to describe it, it sounds like a, it was like a ghostly wind. And uh, I knew what it was, so I was able to kind of deal with it. But I wasn't able to deal with what I was convinced was footsteps. And these are very distinct footsteps because it's not somebody walking on floors, it's somebody walking on beams. And so you would hear these very kind of loud footsteps going down and there would be a long time in between the footsteps because you can't just walk normally. And uh, I remember it was the first week I was up there, I, I, was, I woke up screaming and calling my dad up and I said, there's somebody in the attic, there is somebody in the attic. And my dad was like, Darren, you're, you're a grown ass man, and I'm a boy by the way, I'm fifth grade going into six. And I'm like, no, there's someone in the attic. So my dad would open up the attic door and he'd go there with flashlights and there was a whole routine where he'd say, look in the attic, do you see anyone? And we'd look in the flashlights and all that was in the attic was Christmas decorations, Halloween decorations, there was storage, there was nothing in there. So I was up there for weeks and it got to the point that not only did I hear footsteps, I heard what I was convinced was music and talking. I was asleep upstairs and I hear a noise and the noise was coming up my stairs, not from the attic. I look over the waterbed and down and I see a man on his hands and knees crab crawling through my floor and entering the closet. And I remember, I see him and I, he sees me. And the thing which was so terrifying to me, he wasn't a monster, this was not some scary looking dude, it was a man. And he looked at me and put his finger in front of his mouth and right then I screamed. I screamed louder than I've ever screamed in my life. And I, I, my dad comes running up the stairs and I said, there's someone in the closet, there's someone in the closet. And now my dad's just furious, like he's just enraged now. And he was like, you gotta stop acting like this, there's no one in the closet. And he throws open the closet and he pushes back the clothes and he opens the hatch door and there's no one there, no one. Well, let's cut to a few years back and I had flown home to visit my parents. And my parents had long since moved. Two houses have been exchanged since this original house on 49th Terrace. And uh, we have our old next door neighbors over for dinner. And Mary Kay was her name. And she's sitting there and a very religious woman, very uh, you know, uh, prim and proper and not one to exaggerate or tell stories. 
and we're sitting around the dinner table and she goes, Darren, I have a, a weird question for you, something that, and she goes, this is going to sound weird, but you lived in the attic in 49th Terrace, right? And I said, yeah. Did you live in the unfinished part of the attic? And I said, no, why are you asking me that? Because at that moment, like chills ran up my spine because it's that memory of that man. And she says, when the people bought the house after your parents, they were trying to convert that into storage space. And they said when they went in there, behind the chimney, there was a makeshift cot and magazines and rotten food, and they had tapped into the electricity from another part of the house that was going up. And at that moment, like all the blood ran out of my face, I looked at my dad and I said, fuck you. And that to me, that is fucking horrifying. Mm -hmm.